Hello guys and welcome to this video to understand about this case and that's actually a very important case because we need to know where the pain is coming from, right? So we need to investigate that. Sometimes it's not simple and then we have a clinical situation here that you guys may find in your clinical careers very easily, okay? So take a look at this. Let's understand about this case. We have here uh, posterior rehabilitation of the maxilla bilateral, right? So those are uh, zirconia crowns, okay? And then well, what's happening here? We have um, the two molars here, so ceramic crowns here. The, this is a dental implant, so the second premolar and the first premolar is also a crown, okay? So let's consider that medical history was not contributory for this, um, for this assessment here, for this exercise that we are doing now. Let's also consider that the occlusion, well, of course, this is a, uh, ceramic crowns or zirconia, but uh, let's consider that both sides at least have a similar uh, setup of occlusion and let's consider that the occlusion was at least reasonable, okay? So don't forget about the principles of occlusion, curve of speed, uh, axial load in all of them. So we have a video to review all of them with you guys and I will make the link available here on the top right corner of this screen. It will show up at some point, okay? Now, we need to understand about the pain of the patient. So I'm going to tell you guys that this patient had pain on percussion, but on all these teeth here, okay? So the pain was on all the teeth with crowns, right? Maybe a little bit different from one teeth to the other, so the intensity would vary a little bit from one teeth to the other, but the patient was feeling pain on basically all these teeth upon percussion, if the, even the dental implant. So how come that dental implant is, should be also integrated, right? But wait to see the result because this is a very important clinical exercise for you, okay? Now, uh, there is a CBCT here, but we are going to navigate through the CBCT with you guys to understand better. Let's assume that you have an OPG or just a 2D radiograph, and then you see this situation here, okay? So clinical, of course, you're going to start with your clinical examination, and then soft tissues were okay, you know, the adaptation of the crowns on the gingival tissue was at least reasonable. So let's understand that, you know, the, the clinical exam uh, is not telling you guys a lot of things, okay? So it's not uh, very conclusive uh, to understand about the pain of this patient. And then, of course, you guys will go to radiographs. And then we have a lot of metal off these crowns, right? So it, regardless if they are metal ceramic crowns or you know, zirconia crowns. Here, there is, you guys can see actually the radiopaque aspects of the metal, okay? So we, we are, I'm not going to talk about details of these materials, just know that the, this is a definitive crown, okay, for the moment. Now, uh, if you have this radiograph and then you guys are seeing periodontal ligament space widening and uh, underextended root canal treatment, okay? That's what we are seeing here. So this is what we are seeing for the canine at least. And then you have the, sorry, for the first primo, for the canine, that's, that's actually correct. And then you have the uh, first premolar, we already have a crown here, of course. There was a crown on the canine as well. But the first premolar has now, uh, you could actually consider this a periodontal ligament space widening, but it's almost a periapical granuloma, right? So it's actually, you know, in the limit of those two diagnoses here. Okay, and then from this image, we cannot assess properly the conditions of the root canal. Okay, so maybe the pain is coming because of this tooth. Maybe the pain is coming because of the canine. All right, and those are actually possibilities. So maybe you are not so worried about this because you are going to treat both of them. You are going to address both situations and that's fine. But you should understand a little bit more about the pain of the patient because that's an urgent situation. The patient is in pain. So which one you are going to start with? Okay, that's why this is very important. And then you have the dental implant, which is actually not entirely depicted in this slice, but okay. So uh, we need to assess this in three dimensions as well. And then the first mo uh, molar and the second molar, it's not even showing here, but the maxillary sinus is opacified. Okay, so maxillary sinus is opacified and you guys want to pay attention to that because uh, this, is, this could be one of the reasons or at least related to the reason of the pain. Okay, you guys will understand how very soon. 
All right, so what to do here? There is a recommended reference, by the way, very nice article, just a recommended reference. Let's understand now what happened with the CBCT. Okay, so now I am giving you guys the images of the CBCT. All right, and then take a look at what's happening here. So let's navigate through the CBCT and let's focus on the on this side, okay, on the le upper left side where the problem is, okay, that's where the patient is feeling pain. Okay, then of course we need to align all the axes to understand where is the problem, right? So I'm aligning all the axes, making them parallel to the structure that I want to assess. If you guys don't remember how to read CBCT, go back to the video, how to read CBCT, okay, I will also make the link available here. All right. So, okay, that there is a little bit of periodontal ligament space widening, especially here in the mesial aspects uh, of the mesial lamina dura, but okay, so, uh, you know, this is, uh, this could be a reason for pain, but, uh, and of course, a periapical pain, tenderness to percussion, not a popo pain, of course. Okay, and then we have the premolar, the second premolar, and now we have uh, the diagnosis in 3D, so that's the most important slice, of course, the most important plane, which is the cross-sectional plane, okay, or parasagittal or transaxial. This plane in blue here, the middle of your screen, is the most important one to diagnose structures in dentistry. You guys already know that, okay, otherwise go back to the video of CBCT. And then the root canals are underextended, okay, so the treatment is underextended for both canals. And now you have the periapical granuloma, all right? Uh, all right, so this could be something for us to worry about. Okay, let me even make the, the axial plane also bigger. All right, uh, so we are still investigating. So those are two situations here. The crowns are there, the crowns are adapted. Levels of the alveolar crest at least are reasonable. All right, let's see now the dental implant now, right? And that's the dental implant. Okay, the dental implant is there is a little bit of bone loss, you know, but most of the dental implant is within the limits of the alveolar bone, okay? Uh, then you guys will uh, think that the dental implant is inside the maxillary sinus, but that's not conclusive from here because maybe the dentist did summer elevation of the floor of the maxillary sinus, so sinus lift through the socket or through the uh, the implant perforation or the implant sites, which, which was drilled in the bone, and then with an osteotome, right, the, the, maybe the dentist elevated the sinus floor without even adding grafts, and now the implant is there, but not crossing the membrane, okay, not with a damage in the sinus membrane. So this, an image like this could still be normal, okay, because it could be Summers' technique of sinus lift, Okay, sinus floor uh, augmentation or elevation. All right, so the implants, we are considering this, so you guys are taking notes, you guys are investigating. That's what we need to have initiative to do it, even as dental students. So we are investigating where the pain comes from. Okay, let's go for the next one. And then we have the first molar. Okay, so now we have the first molar. Let's see each of the root canals. So we have here the two mesial canals, okay, mesial buccal canals, of course, let's make parallel, and okay, so we have the, those canals are here, we are seeing in all the planes, right, this one is a little bit underextended, that's the, uh, the, the mesial palatal, of course, right, the MB2, and then we are seeing now the distal, okay, so let's see the distal, and it's a little bit underextended. We have periapical granuloma, buccal periapical granuloma, indeed, or, or at least periodontal ligament space widening here. And then let's go for the palatal, okay? So there are artifacts because of metal and endodontic treatment. Don't forget about this. This is a limitation of the CBCT, at least for the moment. Uh, but okay, we can still use the CBCT to assess the situation, right? And the palatal is a little bit underextended as well. but. All right, so we have a little bit of periodontal ligament space, and then we have a lesion here, right? So we have a lesion here, and the lesion seems to be uh, contiguous or in continuation to the first molar, but it's also in continuation of the, uh, with the second molar. So let's now analyze the second molar, okay? That's what we need to do now. So let's go for the second molar, and then 
Let's make all the axes parallel to the second molar, all right? Very good. So that's the palatal canal, that's the mesial, the distal canal, and that's the mesial canal. And take a look what's happening here. We have even root resorption and then the lesion, the periapical lesion, okay? So that's the periapical lesion, and take a look at this. Now we are seeing that the periapical lesion is even in continuation with the sinus, okay? And that's why the sinus is opacified, all right? Now we can see this very clearly, okay? So if I move, look, from the to the buccal direction, I even see an opening here, okay? So a resorption of the sinus floor, and then the lesion is now in continuation with the antrum, with the sinus area. And of course, uh, that's uh, basically telling us that the opacification is coming from this situation here, okay? If you guys want to see this in the cross-sectional images, no worries. Now you have it, okay? So you have the lesion, and now the lesion is communicating with the sinus opacified area, okay? Now, take a look how knowledge is important. Maxillary sinusitis, okay? So situations like this the pain can be referred, okay? So if, uh, if the patient is feeling pain on multiple teeth, okay, uh, tenderness percussion on multiple teeth, and even feeling pain sometimes uh, behind the zygomatic bone, okay, or feeling pain in this area close to the maxillary sinus as well, those are possible symptoms of maxillary sinusitis, okay? So uh, there are all these situations, we diagnosed all of them, and yes, all of them needs to be addressed. But most likely, this is uh, the responsible for the current pain of the patient, okay? Or at least the, the biggest responsible, let's, let's consider like this, okay? So that's why the pain is affecting all the teeth, because the entire uh, maxillary sinus extension, at least of the lower third of the maxillary sinus, is now pacified. And now this is a situation that leads to a referred pain, okay? So that's basically uh, the most likely, uh, you know, diagnosis or um, possibility of pain causes, okay, for this pain that the patient is feeling, okay? And of course, now take a look at this. The patient has a crown, okay? So you're removing the crown, then retreating the root canal, and then you have this lesion, you know, and then what are the costs for the patient? So maybe we should consider uh, everything to the treatment plan, okay? So maybe extraction, cleaning everything, okay? Even irrigation with saline solution. Uh, if you go for antibiotic ther therapy, then of course, uh, that's the, that depends also on the patient's systemic situation to, for, for this choice. And then uh, the membrane of this maxillary sinus will tend to heal again, Okay, so that's the Schneider membrane of the maxillary sinus. And then after the extraction, uh, there will be the bone healing. Okay, and then you could place, for example, most likely a dental implant because there seems to be bone dimensions enough for that. All right, so there are uh, not only one way of treating this tooth, but there are, we need to consider about this because what is the predictability of this tooth here? Okay, and then uh, here we don't have the best resolution of the CBCT, but we have root resorption. We have even, you see those those uh, radiolucent lines here. But again, uh, the, of course, the prognosis is not good for this tooth. Okay, so that's basically the situation. Let's see this in 3D just for us to finish this nice video. And okay, so now you guys are seeing in 3D. I'm going to edit the 3D reconstruction for you guys to see and basically that's what's happening here right take a look at this a lot of artifacts and then that's your situation here all right so it's not very useful for the for the diagnosis but to show to the patient at least the the, the root canal extensions and everything it's actually useful all right so if you guys like, please hit the like uh, button. Uh, feel free to, to give comments, subscribe to our channel. That's very important. And see you guys in the next videos.